Welcome back to Sunday Vibes, one and all. Would you believe it? We're in the pub, the dream team's together, the free the knee campaign is going as strong as ever. No supporters. First question comes from Jeremiah Smith. He says, name one player you'd sign for each of the top six Ooh, teams, lads. Chris Hamill, give yeah. us a non-boring answer. We're not saying Messi, we're not saying Ronaldo. Okay, how's this for a non-boring answer? I read an article this week based around a theory that you'll find in the numbers game. I forget who produced it. Yeah. But it's, it basically talks up football as a strong link, weak link game. Which means basically big clubs should be spending all their money improving the weakest part of their sides rather than the strongest. Now the antithesis to this recently has been PSG, yep. as in it's spending 200 million plus on Neymar when they should probably, according to this theory, be signing a goalkeeper to upgrade on the likes of Areola, okay. another right back whose defensive output is more solid than Dani Alves, and maybe a more convincing centre half than Marquinhos, although I do think he's a decent player. They point to Real Madrid as a good example of this. Now, when Real Madrid weren't winning the league, weren't winning the European Cup, they went out, got Casemiro, got Dani Carvajal, and both played integral roles to securing those two trophies. But there is limitations to this. Um, but they see football as a low scoring game, which is why they say you should spend your money covering your limitations rather than going for things in a blaze of glory. Now, the last game I watched was Manchester United Real Madrid in the Super Cup. And mm. for me, I think you need to strengthen in your fullback areas, especially if you're going to carry on playing that 4 3 3 system. Um, Antonio Valencia, I know he's your player of the season last season, yeah. but they were definitely targeting him and Lindelof okay. down their left-hand side anyway. Yeah. Um, I think Matteo Darmian, his defensive output is pretty sound, isn't it? But if Luke Shaw doesn't come back in uh, prime fitness, then I think you need a left-back who can both do the defensive work and uh, supply Lukaku with those sort of deliveries. There may be a Sidibe, would add, or a Danny Rose, or a... Danny uh, Rose is a definite interesting one. Or a Benny Henricks from, from Bayer Leverkusen. But aside from United boys, who else do you think in the top six needs to strengthen? Oh, am I up next? You're up next. Well, I think we've talked about Chelsea. Chelsea's shortcomings, right? Their yeah. squad is pretty thin. They don't really have backups for their wing backs. They True. don't have backups for their central midfielders at the moment. Um, now, I think... Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain might actually be a good signing for them. They need to fill a homegrown need. They need a guy who can cover at wing back. They okay. need a guy who can cover at centre mid. And he'd do all of that. Is he a world beater? No. He's still very young though. And that would make a lot of sense for me. He's got one year left, left on his contract. He wouldn't cost the earth in terms of wages either. So that's probably somebody I'd be looking at if I were Chelsea. But, you know, all summer I feel like they've just been taking big swings at big targets and missing again and again. Yeah. You know, at the beginning of the summer, we were like, my God, they're going to go out and get Alexandro, you know. Yeah, he's, missed him. He's going to absolutely dominate that midfield, uh, that left side of the park. And instead, they've missed out on him. And now they look to be in quite a shaky situation unless they salvage it soon. Yeah, obviously, they're going to be interested in Danny Rose. We shoot this on a Thursday, so Danny Rose's quotes have just dropped, hence why he is a large part of this discussion. Uh, I think Liverpool, Definitely need a centre half. I think yeah. that um, going forward, the signing Mo Salah is fantastic. They're going to be an extremely dangerous team on the break this summer. Um, if they can keep hold of Philippe Coutinho, obviously, just had the news that a 100 million euro bid has been rejected oh, as yeah. well. So whether or not they keep him plays a big part of this season. Um, but centre half Lovren and Matip. There's definite improvements on there out there in the current market. I think they are very keen on Virgil Van Dijk, um, despite the fact he. Didn't play many games at all last season. Obviously, picked up a serious injury around Christmas time and might not be back until October to full fitness Isn't anyway. Um, training by himself, yeah. But yeah, centre back for me at Liverpool. I think mm. the Man City still need a centre mid. They're still a centre mid short. Fernandinho, good player. Gundogan, consistently injured. Yaya Torre, mm. really getting on now. Where else in the market? Uh, like, where else in their squad? can fill that hole. If Gundogan's injured, they're going to have to drop KDB or David Silva back into a central midfield role. Well, they've trialled Danilo as a number six in, in, in pre-season. They have, yeah. They, where, he put, where he played when it's he was a big ask, though, to though, drop him bit. into the Premier League and it, ask him to be an immediate central midfielder. It, it, it is. I, I completely agree. In a way, some of the problems that City face are the same as Liverpool. So, um, if you actually look at uh, the quality of shots they conceded last season, they don't concede a lot of shots. But basically, when you get through the press, you tend to end up with very high value shots. Like if you look at expected goals or whatever, the chances of them scoring from the kind of shots uh, that they can see yeah. are really, really high. So Lovren, Matip, Stones, Otamendi, they're all facing this difficulty that quite often they've got zero help because all their players have gone up pitch and now have been played yeah. through. 
So um, I think they need kind of what Liverpool need, which is a screening central midfielder, a guy who can pretty much run the middle of the park yeah. defensively and pass forward a little bit. I like Jorginho at Napoli. Uh, mm. We've talked quite a bit about him this summer. A ph phenomenal passer, uh, huge defensive output, can create a tiny bit as well. Um, but that's what they really need. They need that all-action dynamo. Liverpool have been looking at Naby Keita, Arturo Vidal, but Man City just don't seem to really care. They seem to be happy. That's part of the reason I can't believe neither Liverpool or Manchester City have made a significant move for Mateo Kovacic yet. Yeah. A guy yeah. who can both screen and can pass through the lines, can also versatile enough to be able to play mm. in a forward position if he needs to. It's yeah. such yeah. a good signing for both I, I mean, teams. even he's quite box to box. So I, I'm more surprised they haven't gone in big for a Fabinho, maybe a Rafa Guerrero from Dortmund. He was extremely mm. productive in defensive He'd midfield after he moved from left back, wasn't he? Big bucks at uh, uh, Dortmund Guerrero. last season. Um, but Tottenham as well, we, we're yet to touch, touch upon them. They could do with just signing a player. Anybody. Anybody and everyone. I've said Julian Brandt on previous episodes to support Christian Eriksen in that uh, creative mould. Kieran Trippier looks like he could be out uh, for the start of the season. Shit. It looks like he could be injured for up to eight weeks. So who's going to play at right back? He's going to have to promote from youth. Dieter, probably. I reckon, I reckon he'll Peters. promote from youth. Yeah. yeah, I think he'll promote from youth. Think it will really? be Walker Peters. I think there's an even bigger issue if they lose Danny Rose. Then you've got both of your starting fullbacks from the season before where you finish second out the door. They can just say no to Danny Rose, though. He's got an incredibly long contract there, and he can talk about how he wants more money as much as he wants, but he signed a new contract. Like they, Five like year they, contract last season, He's got zero leverage. 100%. At, but, at but, what's, but do you want a player that doesn't want to play for you? starting in your team I, and if he doesn't start who's the left back to be cover? fair to him he didn't say that he didn't say that he doesn't want to play and he didn't say that he wants out what he wants is either a move or he wants wages that reflect uh how good he feels he is and that's fair enough like he said it's his last big contract he's 27 now yeah. his fitness is not all that and so tottenham are the biggest underpayers of talent in the league by an absolute mile they pay about half the it's wages per ridiculous. season. Ridiculous. I mean, play. you look at how Danny Rose is on 58k a week when Jamie Vardy is earning 80. It's absolutely mind blowing. Mm. How Harry Kane is earning just over 100k is incredible. Harry Kane could go out and easily double his money in this current market if, yeah. if he was yeah, to be yeah. signed, and probably and probably some more as well. I would say he's upwards of a 250,000 pound a week player now. Mm. Yeah, he's certainly about there. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing though. Like, you can. Because they're so good at signing people up, they end up in this situation where players can say what they want, but Spurs don't have to sell. They've already sold Kyle Walker for 50 mil, so they can just say, no, you're staying for now. I mean, Arsenal are obviously in an opposite situation yeah. where they need to, I think they need to beef up centre midfield. Yeah. And they also need to think about, okay, let, let's say you keep Ozil and Sanchez this season, which I think we will, but then next year you might be in a position where they both leave for free in the summer and suddenly you've got to buy two attacking superstars to replace them. Yeah, That's not a situation easy. no one wants to be in. Even for the big clubs, that's difficult. Look at Barcelona, currently struggling to replace Neymar. Um, so I think that Arsenal would probably be best served trying to get a centre midfield. I mean, if Kovacic is on the market, I don't yeah. think Arsenal would get him, but he'd be perfect. You uh, still haven't re quite replaced Santi Cazorla's output either, have you? Well, that's what he'd do, right? Kovacic is that guy who can dribble, who can defend a bit, yeah. who can attack. We don't have anyone like that in the squad, I don't think. Yeah, I, I think, think it seems pretty hell-bent on bringing Lamar in and then deploying him as a central midfielder. Yeah, I don't... I don't to replicate it seems Cazorla's to have gone a bit output. quiet, that Lamar move, doesn't it, now? I don't think it will yeah, happen. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to happen either. I think, it's late. I think it's late in the transfer window. Again, Monaco have made so much money this window, they can just say no. Don't need to sell him. They're in a Tottenham yeah. position. But who do you guys think the top six need to sign to win the Premier League? Let us know in the comments down there. The next question was tweeted at us by a bunch of you who's doing the rounds on Twitter. If you could go back in time and give one player in football history a clean bill of health, no injuries, mm. who would you choose and why? I'll lead us off. Marco Van Basten. Yeah, great shout. Three-time Ballon d'Or winner, 88, 89, 92. This is a guy who scored 130 in 130 for Ajax. He was going at sort of 90 in 130 for AC Milan. Unbelievable player. And then he retired age 28 yeah. with serious knee injuries. Especially when Capello came back to Milan. Yeah. Um, he had that unreal season, didn't he? Absolute madness. Um, retirement 28 at that level is criminal. Uh, so yeah, I'd bring back Van Basten. What about you boys? Well, talking of criminal, I think we were probably robbed of five to seven years of Brazilian Ronaldo, weren't we? Yes, after his recurrent knee injuries, after they rushed him back to fitness for the World Cup. Had he not injured his knees and had he been able to maintain that form that he displayed at Barcelona and Inter, 
Um, he could have scored many more goals and we'd have talked about him on the same level as Messi and Ronaldo, I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced. Yeah, yeah, I think we I probably, could, probably, probably would have. Yeah. Pato? I mean, quite often there are a lot of midfielders who we've lost to injury. I mean, where you think, oh wow, the potential that was there. So, I mean, in recent years, you know, you've got your Wilshires, your Owen Hargreaves, you've got Ilkay Gundogan. Yeah. Because you look at those players and you think, God, if they'd say fit. Marco Royce Marco as well. Marco Royce, yeah. Um, Arjen Robben. Yeah, Kaka. Arjen Robben has spent so much time yeah, it's a um, great shout, on the Robin. bench. Gareth Bale as well. But I mean, as an Arsenal fan, probably the player who would have made the biggest difference is Van Persie. If he'd stayed fit in a couple of the seasons where he got injured, then Arsenal probably would have ended their trophy drought a lot sooner. Ooh, but who do you guys think? Van Basten, Van Persie, two Dutchmen, or is it R9? Vote in the poll up here now. Next question comes from Toby McCollum at Pocock Toby. He says, in your opinion, what is the best league in the world? Now, this is going to cause Ooh. some debate. Pato. What are you going Chaos for? Chaos in the comments, Pat. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I have to go for the Premier League. And I know everyone's going to say that's because I'm a Premier League fan, but it's really not. Like, I think in the past, the Premier League didn't have the top level coaches. They only had one or two. Okay. Um, and now they have a phenomenal roster yeah. of coaches from all different styles as well. Um, all different backgrounds, which I think makes for a really exciting league. There's tons of talent. And I think it's really deep all the way down. I think if you match up, you know, the lower teams to their counterparts, or, uh, in continental leagues, then they obliterate them. Some of them. Really? Yeah, I think if you look at if you look at say Everton who finished in seventh place and compare them to the people who finished seventh place in say uh, La Liga, which I think was Athletic Club or uh, Serie A, which last season was into, weren't great, um, or Freiburg in Germany, then I do think that Everton have got more talent and would probably beat them. And I think that's true basically down the league. What I like is a league where anyone can beat anyone, and that simply doesn't happen in La Liga, it doesn't happen in Serie A, and it particularly actually doesn't happen in the Bundesliga. I actually yeah. don't think that Everton would beat those teams as comfortably mm. as you think. I think Everton are particularly average. I think you Inter look, Milan and Athletic season, Club in particular would give them a really last good Last season, you yeah. think that, that Athletic Club team, that, that yeah. Inter Milan team and that Everton team. I that think, Everton team had Lukaku. I think they'd see Freiburg off, but I think that it, it, Inter mm. and Athletic would give them a really, Inter were really good Inter were not good at all last season well, and Athletic Club weren't special either. Mm. I'd be inclined to agree, having just witnessed Everton's Europa League qualifiers against a third-rate side where they won with a Leighton Baines deflected own goal. They, they barely that. won away from home. I think they should care about that. They definitely and should. And I think they've invested a significant amount uh, in their squad that the hierarchy at Everton should be demanding a Europa League run. Um, you look at Saints last season, Southampton beat into Milan, didn't they, before yeah. they lost to Hapoel Beersheba, another side who I mean, Celtic struggled against them in the qualifiers too. That's not <laughs> um, but when they beat into Milan, Saints fans were saying this is the, the best night of our lives as a Saints fan. But that's not about the... That's and, not and the club, I think they, they went for it. But that's about way. the historical place of Inter Milan rather than about the Europa League, right? It's about the fact that Inter Milan are an historically great club and Southampton aren't. I and, think... and the fact that they went through. I think I agree with you when it comes to the Premier League in terms of talent throughout the league, in terms of... Um, competitiveness, yes, it comes out on top. But if we're gonna, if I'm going to play devil's advocate here, what about British clubs' inadequacies in Europe? What yeah. about last season, for example, with Tottenham's failings in the Champions League, with Leicester going the furthest of any English side? It was, uh, yeah, it was a poor show, I, and it has been for the last I two or three years. I 100 agree that, mm. that our top level Why clubs in Europe are miles behind, especially the likes of Real Madrid. Um, and there's a few reasons for that, we've discussed them before, but I think in terms of talent, I don't think the Premier League any longer has the best talent. Pre-Paul Pogba, I don't think English teams have signed the best in the world. You're talking the pinnacle years. though, aren't you, rather yeah. than a, the median. Uh, and I think, I don't know when it happened, but there was a very clear shift from us being able to take the best in the world in sort of 05, 06, to then Barca and Real and Bayern having their absolute pick. But this is the Man argument. United have gone head to head. Man City have gone head to head. Chelsea have gone head to head with t with Barca, Bayern, and Real over and over over the last five years, and every single time those three clubs have come out on top. But this is an argument though that you that that always comes around, and it's not an argument about the league. It's just an argument about a few super clubs. Yeah. Like you're not you're now not comparing the Premier League to La Liga. You're com comparing the Premier League to Barcelona and Real Madrid, mm. and no one's going to win that battle. Those teams are always going to have superstars. Yeah, and this has coincided with Manchester United's fall from grace as well, right? Because they were the one British club who consistently attracted yeah. superstars. But without Champions League football, I mean, you've still got Paul Pogba. 
yeah, you know, with, with Real Madrid true. competing for his signature. Maybe, maybe that was the turning point, you never know. But I also think that some of our lower level teams are extremely poor. I think that your Burnleys and your Swansea's are, they're a long, long way off being anywhere close to like a, a top yeah. half team. I, yeah, but Burnley, Burnley are dreadful. They were dreadful last season and they probably should have got relegated, but there were teams, better, there were teams that were worse mm. than them. Like, they're, they're a horrible team, but, but I mean, that's equally true. But if you were the to put them seat, up against... You, know, you look at Hamburg or, or Ingolstadt and they're dreadful well, as if well. You, if you, you know? were to put Burnley up against, was it Wolfsburg or Werder Bremen who finished right down the bottom half last season? Werder Bremen. Werder yeah. Bremen. I, I'm not sure Burnley would get a result at all. But, well, no, I don't think they would either. I'm not saying that they'd beat every team in the Bundesliga, but I don't think they'll beat many teams in the Premier League. I think they'll probably get relegated. Alternatively, season. you look right. how well Leicester did against San Paolo Sevilla, who exactly. were challenging for the league, and how well they fared, particularly at home, against Atletico Madrid in that second half. Um, it's, it's a really interesting debate, and I think that the, um, the, the management, the pedigree of management that is now in the Premier League is making, or hopefully make, English clubs a little bit more, well, a lot more competitive in yeah, Europe because definitely. of their new, the new tact and their fresh approach that they're bringing to the English game. Whereas I think there was a bit of a, it was rotting from the, from the inside out, wasn't it? Because we had a lot of jobs for the boys, a yeah. lot of unqualified managers, a lot of ex-players taking positions they perhaps weren't deserved of. And maybe now with Pep, with Jurgen Klopp, fully bedded in with their own squads, their, our, our luck will change on the continent. And I think that's the reason that the superstars are starting to come back as well. That, co that coupled with our huge, huge budgets that we've got in the Premier League will equal the likes of Griezmann. Not, so, it's not saying yes to Real Madrid or Bayern Munich, it's saying yes to Manchester United. Well, he United. wanted to come to United, didn't he, this He season? did want to Surely. come to Manchester United, and obviously the transfer ban fucked us. So maybe we'll get him <laughs> next season, never know. But what league do you guys think is the strongest in the world? Vote in the poll above my head right now. Final question of the day comes from Tuesday Dalby, who says, if you could change one rule in football, what would it be and why? Let's keep this one short, gentlemen. Took her for a drink on Tuesday. Ooh, hamster, what are you saying? Mate, I was hoping Pato would take the lead on this because I don't know. Go on then, Pat, you frankly. take the lead. Um, I mean, they're talking about stopping the clock for, uh, you no. know, free kicks and stuff. Yeah, but <laughs> no. look, you just say that though because you're like a sort of small-minded idiot. Whereas, um, <laughs> like, actually, you, if you, they did a study like five, six years ago <coughs> and they figured out how long the ball was actually in play in Premier League matches. It's and like in some games, minutes. it was 44 minutes. Ooh. In some games, 44 minutes <laughs> under half the match. Wow. But like, um, I see, but also it is nice to know the game will start here and finish here and I can get on with something at, you know, quarter to six or whatever. Um, so I don't know, maybe I think, maybe it'd be fun if we just like went absolutely mental in extra time. What extra, do you mean? extra time, multi ball, you know. Well, just put more than one ball on the pitch. I think both teams should have to remove a player every five minutes of extra time. It goes down to a minimum of one player, then it starts going back up to 11. So it ends up with one player versus one player. Full size pitch, carnage, and steroids are allowed. Steroids are allowed, hamster? Yeah. Um, I remember reading something by Socrates, R.I.P. Uh, the Brazilian footballer, not the philosopher, because yeah, he's definitely say. he's been dead for a while. Yeah, he's super but um, where football should be played nine aside, such as the athleticism of, of the players now, I'd like to see a nine aside professional game just to see his theory put in action. Because what a player, what a man, what an influence he was. Maybe the sin bin as well. Take that from rugby. That's pretty sensible. But other than that, the game's perfect, Joe. Stop changing it. I'm going insane here. A B B A pen coming. Mate. I want to introduce designated goons. No, you're, you I are a goon. Hockey. So the idea, you are bear with me, yeah. bear with me. So the idea would be there would be They've two gone. players, one on either one on either side that could not get sent off <laughs> and could abuse whoever they went down the pitch. What, just end people's careers, just putting in two foot as a stationary man. Yes, about yes. which great player has been ruined by injury. I know, and you're saying you want to put a hatchet man on the pitch. Imagine the transfers for the goons. You would have. People, you'd have the opposition, the goons would basically have to fight each other because if you were a goon and I was a goon, we both went after Hamill, you'd have to stop me if you were on his team. And then we'd just have a good old scrap. So you know, we had the game going on, centre There's set, a more interesting question. WWE Pat versus Joe. Who would win? Let us know in the poll above. No, carry on. I think, I think it would be an incredible spectacle to watch. 
Just imagine that. The game's going on, you see two warriors hammering each other. I mean, chest, arguably, that turf. already happens. You could just go and watch And this boxing. is why you're a YouTuber and don't have an actual job. Yeah, yeah. true. <laughs> That's probably true. And also I mean, because you are a good, you are a hatchet man on the field. Yeah, but it would, would it not violent. be hilarious? You could, imagine somebody paying 100 million contracts to Conor McGregor. I mean, I feel like the championship <laughs> basically already has this, does it not? It'd like be the champion, A championship side with a hard contract. So you were Conor already McGregor. getting excited about it. I'd Bring it, it in. I would watch it. I might though. write to the FA. Should yeah, Conor should McGregor? Play for Imagine <laughs> that for Madrid sign Madrid sign McGregor yeah, Barcelona replaced Neymar with Conor Conor McGregor <laughs> Revealed McGregor signs for Manchester United as goon Views <laughs> So that's all we've got time for today If you want to be involved next week Bang your question in the comment Using the hashtag Sunday Vibes Hamster What should people do next? They should go over and watch the latest episode of Stat Wars the Champion Featuring yeah. Adam McCola from Full Time Devils Oh sexy times Thanks so much for watching We'll catch you next time Goodbye Sayonara.